Hello and welcome back to Gods of Winter. We are moving into the red cards. Let's see what this new set has in store for us. I'm just going to jump right into it. If you're at this point in the series, you probably know what's up. If you don't, go check out my old videos or, you know, just hang out and see what's up. You'll, you'll, you'll figure it out. It's versus AI. Let's go. Thawing Winds is a four mana red enchantment aura. Enchanted creature gets plus three plus three and has flying. Weird effect for red. I think that's probably perfectly reasonable for, for four? Yeah, I mean for four mana I would I would probably play a three of a four mana three three with flying. So being able to like add those stats to an existing creature, I think is probably pretty reasonable. In a time of winter, there is only one cure. Thawing winds, I guess. No, I like that. Good start. Good start. Scab Clan Brute is a three mana red legendary enchantment creature Minotaur, it looks like, based off of the art. I almost thought that was Minion, but no, it's Minotaur. Uh, it's a three mana two three with when Scab Clan Brute enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Whenever Scab Clan Brute attacks, it gets m that plus two or minus two? Plus two until end of turn. Huh, so three mana, gain three life, then you have a two three, which attacks as a four three. Seems pretty good. It wait, it's a legendary enchantment creature? No, 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 no. This will not do. This will not do. I, 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 I'm vetoing, I'm vetoing this card. I think this is a pretty cool card if this was just kind of like, kind of a general like, oh yeah, that's just sort of one of Red's go-to creatures in this set. It's just a nice little deck filler. Uh, no, as a legendary enchantment creature, we can do better, we must do better. I'm sorry, Scab Clan Brute. I'd love to see more Minotaur cards in the set. You are not it. The clans move as a single being. It's stomp dwarfing even the most resilient flesh and bone. Cool. Wind Rider of Iros. I don't really know what Iros is. It's another Minotaur, though. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, that seems a reasonably legendary name. Three mana, three, three. Other shaman creatures you control get plus one, plus one. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a minotaur shaman. We can't say for sure. Uh, I mean, that data is recorded somewhere, but that, that's not, that's neither here nor there. But, um, that's cool. And then it has, for red, minotaur creatures you can control get plus one, plus one. That is so scary. But, like... Oh, does that, 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 I mean, that's, that's cool. Like, what a cool Minotaur Lord. Just like, oh yeah, it's not that I have plus one, plus one to all Minotaurs, it's that I have red plus one, plus one to all Minotaurs. So, that's cool. It's very strong. It's, it's stupidly strong, honestly. But it's, I mean, is it a legendary enchantment creature? I think it is. If you live by your faith, the road is paved with gold. Jadar of the of the tribe of Kor. We saw a thing in white about Kor soldiers. They, they didn't have a much of a through line, unfortunately, but I like the idea that we're seeing some more Kor stuff going on here. Wind Rider of Iroas. Is Iroas from... That, that sounds, like, familiar. I think that's from something specific, and I can't remember what. So it's kind of a weird name for a legendary, but I, it, it's, like, grandiose enough that it doesn't just seem like some chump in the army, right? This is, this is a legendary creature. It, it, it works for me. It works for me. Harald of Icefire. Not Harold and not Harold, but Harald. I don't know this word. Maybe it's a real word. Ooh, another shaman. Yeah, oh, it's a shame that that legendary Minotaur couldn't have been a shaman. I think it's fine. I think it probably works better not as a shaman, even though, you know, narratively, it would be cool for them to be a shaman. But mechanically, there's a lot going on in that creature already. I don't think it needs to also be a shaman. Harald of Icefire is a four mana, four three... Orc Shaman with Haste, okay? At the, beginning, at the beginning of each upkeep, if you gained eight or more life this turn, 
Harald of Icefire deals two damage to each opponent. That is a very weird payoff. Like it's it's a very steep cost for not much payoff, but like, all right, sure. I mean, it's just upside. I think, yeah. Cool idea of having this like. Um, I like the idea that you have your Minotaur combos with Minotaurs and Shamans. So like, if Shamans are both in Orcs and Minotaurs, we can have like a Minotaur Orc alliance in this set. The children of winter grow up early. Soon they learn to break through the thaw and strike through the ice. Harald, hero of Frostfire. Which is not ice fire spelt with a Y. It's Frostfire spelled with an I. Uh, Brutal Hordes is a three mana red enchantment. Whenever a creature you control attacks, you may have it fight another target creature you don't control. Holy crap, that's both very, very cool and very, very interesting and very, very strong. I love this. This is such a cool design. Is it too... It's probably too strong. But, like, it feels thematically interesting. It feels like... It, like it's in interesting... To, I just like interesting designs. Things that we can go, ooh, I haven't seen that before. And, like, yeah, so... You declare attackers before attacks, like, before any blocks or anything, you just get to do a fight. Which means you've marked damage. Then your opponent gets to choose blockers. Like, that's super interesting. I love that a lot. As long as a horde survives, another will grow. That's awesome. That's so cool. Zur Ta, Exterminator. Is it two mana, three, two, Phyrexian Giant? Okay, we've seen Phyrexians in the other colors. What are they doing for red? Whenever a source you control deals combat damage to a player, exile it. If you do, create a tapped 1-1 one, one zombie creature token. What? <laughs> Holy crap. Interesting. That's such a cool ability. So, like, if you have, like, bodies on the battlefield, right? If you've got creatures, any creature that hits face will get exiled. Wait, does that work? Does, does, does the permanent count as the source? I think it does, right? Yeah. A source you control deals damage. You exile, like... The source, which is the car. Yeah, yeah, that works. That works. That's so interesting. So if you have a creature, it hits face, it gets exiled, and you get a 1-1. One, one. Usually, you'd rather not have that, but if you had, like, I don't know, like, some kind of... I was thinking, like, a Blitz effect. In Blitz, you'd probably rather draw the card, but this is an alternate, right? You run it out there, it gets haste, it goes... It would have sacrificed anyway. Instead of getting sacrificed, it gets exiled, so you don't actually get your card draw, but you get this 1-1 one, one instead. Interesting. But I think what's really interesting, and, let's, and, and if you know rules better than me, and I'm sure you do, listener, I think, like, a lightning bolt to the face you'd exile the Lightning Bolt card off the stack, right? So it would do the three damage. You don't care about it. The, the, the spell was going to the graveyard anyway. It gets exiled and you get a 1-1, one, one. right? Like, I think that's how this works. So it goes into like a red Spell Slinger deck where you could you turn your, sp your cheap burn spells into, I guess not Spell Slinger, but like burn spell, a burn deck. You turn your cheap burn into 1-1s. One, And it also means that when those 1-1s one, one start attacking, if they hit face, they don't, like, it, because they come into play tapped, they're not, um, they're not going to come into play untapped when they exile themselves, which is great because it means that you're not going to just, like, give them all pseudo-vigilance, right? So, like, I think that the fact that it's tapped is super relevant. That's so cool. Phyrexians consider them merely self-anointed, those who lack of those whose lack of belief in their own fealty has no hope of changing their allegiances. This card is cool. Zertan Exterminator. Wow. 
Have we ever seen a Phyrexian giant? That sounds terrifying. Imagine if a, a, a Phyrexian giant. Harpoon Riders is a 2-mana, two 2-1 two Goblin Warrior. We haven't really seen any goblins yet in this set, I don't think. Maybe a few, but I can't remember them. Harpoon Riders can't block. Harpoon Riders can't block. It's a 2-mana, two 2-1 two that can't block. They've traveled the mountains, crossed the glaciers, and can track a slippery trickster down a storm drain. That is so cute. It gets rerolled. It's not no. It's not. It's not printable. Like you wouldn't. You would print that. Ooh. Okay. More minotaurs. Razor claw ancient is a two mana two one minotaur warrior. Whenever razor claw ancient attacks, it gets plus two plus o oh, until end of turn. Cool. Okay. So it's it's a two mana two one that attacks as a four one. That's potentially scary. Probably not that big a deal. It's only got one toughness. It gets pinged down easily. It doesn't come into play with haste. It doesn't have first strike. But if you give it, like, first strike or something, this is this is nasty. I'm into it. I think it's great. It just works well as, like, a very consistent body in that Minotaur deck we're sort of seeing be created. When they wake, I would like to find that the sun is setting on the keep of Marandur. Krennic of Marandur. Is Marandur from something? Is that a real magic place? I haven't heard of that before. That sounds cool. Ghost Breaker Ape. What? Yes! It's a six mana, six, six enchantment creature ape. They have menace. When Ghost Breaker Ape enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Until Ghostbreaker Ape leaves the battlefield. This card is nuts. Oh, I love this. <laughs> it's a Sasquatch. It's a, it's like, <laughs> it's a magic Sasquatch. Six mana, six, six with menace, ETB, exile and non-land permanent as a, like a jailer effect. It, it, will come back if this thing dies. Oh, that's rad. As goblins and goblins went to war, so did the old gods and the old ones. Ooh, that sounds like it has nothing to do with this card. Oh, I love- that's so fun. Oh, that's so good. Deep Freeze Nymph. Another nymph! I think that enchantment creature really encourages the AI to come up with nymphs and spirits and stuff. It's very cool. We've seen the most nymphs we've ever seen with this set. Deep Freeze Nymph is a 3 mana red 2 2 enchantment creature nymph. Whenever Deep Freeze Nymph attacks, creatures defending player controls. Get minus one, minus one until end of turn. That is scary. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I love it. No, you may not cross the Vitha River. We'd never stand for it. Rafik, Shedu Deshtan Poet. Oh. I, I, I love this card. I don't know why. Like, it's so simple, but I think it really, really lands well. It, I'm sure it's too powerful. This it's, it's fun. Being powerful is fun. People love powerful cards. Hope's End is a one mana red enchantment. When Hope's End enters the battlefield, create two 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 white bird creature tokens with flying. Holy crap! Okay, for three mana, regenerate Hope's End. That is irrelevant. That that doesn't matter. That's that's a completely unnecessary line this is just a one mana create two two twos and then you can like flicker it and stuff because it's an enchantment instead of like a sorcery wow is this where i draw the line <laughs> like i love such ridiculously strong stuff and then i see this and i'm like no you couldn't you couldn't possibly it all but destroyed its young in the blast, leaving only their memory. 
This card's cool. This card is... I mean, it's, it's like... The thing is, is this card cool? Not really, it's just strong. Like, there's something actually, like, really interesting about it. It's, it's cool, though. It's cool. I've decided it's cool. Ember Mages Chill. We gotta have something to, like, let Red defend against some of the ridiculous, like... Pushed creatures that we've seen in the in, in, in previously in the set. Ember Mage's Chill is a three mana red instant. Destroy target creature or enchantment. It can't be regenerated. There we go. Ooh, good little kill spell. That's rad. Goblins bring death. Death brings pain. The entire plane of Aethros cries out with the agony of his of this slaughter. Nice. Just good to have a good to have a spell like that. I do hope we see a little bit of burn in red, because otherwise it's gonna be really hard to make that other card work. Orzov Unhollowed is a three mana instant. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a card at random from it. That player discards that card. I mean, this is just, they discard a card at random. Except you get to look at their hand, which is a, is, makes it a bit stronger. For three mana, this seems a bit expensive, but... Random discard is scary. And knowledge is useful, right? Being able to see what's in their hand is potentially quite relevant. And I think there was, like, a red-black discard deck showing up in black there was a discard theme in black and red black seemed like the color pair the game was suggesting honestly we've kind of seen like an interesting sort of like white blue pair um black red pair so far i don't i don't remember if there was a blue well i don't think there was a blue black so some interesting sort of like pairing showing up but it's not gonna work because there's five colors but whatever cool they say there are three sorts of sorrow. Death, of course. Drowning, too. Though there is something special about that. And despair. When it overwhelms the mind and takes over the soul, that's the worst of all. Abbot Lanfranc of Black Abbey. Huh. Interesting. Midnight Apparition is a four mana Phyrexian Vampire. Oh, what are you gonna do? It's a four mana two two creature. For three mana, exile target creature. Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Ooh. Once again, we're seeing black red is the like, is the, is the, is the color pair of the set, right? Are we going to actually see, like, a set that has, like, two color pairs as, like, a theme as opposed to just kind of random cards, which is what you usually see with AI? This is cool. But yeah, more black-red. Repeatable three-mana flicker something. But it's not instant flicker, it's flicker at the beginning of the next end step, so you can use this... You can use this both aggressively and, like, you can use this against your opponent's stuff so that they don't have something so you can attack him. And then you can also use it your stuff to flicker your stuff. Like, it is cool. It also only hits creatures, which is relevant. You can't, like, flicker an enchantment with this like we were seeing earlier with that other enchantment we saw. So that's kind of interesting. I like it. When... Wait. What once held the Strix at bay, it now seeks to punish. Tessa. Hammer of Wrath. I don't think there's any artifacts in this set. I haven't seen... Oh, maybe maybe there are some, like, colorless. When we get to colorless, I guess we'll find out if there's any colorless art... Uh, I was going to say equipment, not artifacts. Because I was wondering about this, because this is sort of an enchantment theme set. I had to be honest, I don't really play much magic. <laughs> so I, I, I've never actually played... Uh, Theros block, so I don't actually know what the distribution of stuff is. I just know they have lots of enchantments, because that's like a theme. And gods. 
Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and first strike. There we go. And the next time it attacks, defending player loses two life. Huh. Is this correct? Like, is this how you would word this effect? Right? It's not like enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has first strike. When Hammer of Wrath enters the battlefield, the next time enchanted creature attacks, defending player... Like, like it's weird, because it, it's, it's like an ETB, right? It's, it's a trigger of... Basically, it's when this enchants a creature... I think this is wrong. I think the wording on this spell is incorrect, but I think I'm going to allow it. I usually don't allow things that don't line up with the correct, like, proper wording of the game. But I feel like this is correct, right? It's it's like, even if there's no precedent for this, which maybe there is, maybe there isn't, I don't know. Even if there's no precedent, yeah. Enchant creature, the next time enchanted creature attacks, if any player loses two life. Like, it's a one-time effect, but the trigger isn't ETB, the trigger is enchanting a creature. That's the way I see it. I could be completely wrong, but that's 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 how it looks to me, which is pretty cool. As fearless as they were fierce, the clan's magic formed and formed the, the foundations of many drownyard settlements. Interesting. Actually, now that I think about it, if I had to, like, guess how the colors are coming together, it's like... I don't remember exactly what white was. White was too long ago. I think it was white-blue. But you could do something interesting with, like, cross colors, right? Like, you've got your white and your blue, and then you've got your blue and your red, and then you've got your black and your red. Like, that might be something how it lines up. So everything gets two, but it's, like, one that's adjacent and one that's across. Does that, does that make sense? I, I need to stop thinking about this. Giant B! Yeah, it's Giant B! Giant B is a three mana, two, two insect. It has flying. When Giant B dies, put it on top of its owner's library. This is bad. <laughs> I mean, if you just consistently want so, like to be able to play this every time it dies, I mean, it's not terrible. It's a 3-mana 2-2 two -two with flying. I'd play that, especially in common. Like, I, I think that this is, like, a common include that you would definitely include in draft, but probably wouldn't include in constructed. And that's fine. Like, sets need that. I'm into it. Weird effect, though. Just, like, it keeps coming back, but, like, not in an efficient way. <laughs> it doesn't go to your hand. It goes to your library, so it eats your draw. Like, it's, it's not even a May ability, right? Like... <laughs> Like, I think it's more often than not you're going to be like, ah, dang it, I needed, a, I needed to draw something that wasn't a B. Crap. <laughs> In the mount To the mountain gods and all the nature spirits, good riddance. <laughs> Can't get rid of bees. I guess, I don't know. Bone Grinder is a 5-mana 3-4 goblin. Ooh. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Bone Grinder attacks each combat. It this is just bad. <laughs> this is just a bad card. It eats the skulls of its victims and stokes its furnace. It gr it grinds bones until there is nothing left. I think we've rerolled every goblin we've seen in this set so far. A shame. Razor Raptor is a five mana three three. Beast. For generic and red, sacrifice Razor Raptor. Razor Raptor deals one damage to any target. <sighs> I mean, pinging something down is potentially quite useful. Any target is as powerful, like, verbiage, right? Like, we saw that, you know, like, 4-1 earlier. Being able to actually ping that is significant. Not for this, though. This is too expensive. Hunted for their secret blood... The Shadow Prowlers now eat anything. Razor Sharp Tongue. I don't know what that means, but it's not canon, so it doesn't matter. 
Yadame Pack Leader is a 5 mana, 5-5 five, five beast. Okay, now we're talking about other bugs, both flying and non-flying, don't untap during their controller's untap step. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with how that's worded. It's just not, like, you wouldn't write it that way. <laughs> it's unnecessary. Also, like, bug isn't a creature type. Insect is. Mmm. Creatures with flying, including bug creatures, don't untap during their controller's untap step. Right, so flying creatures don't untap. Bug creatures also don't untap. Regardless of if the bug creature has flying or not, it's still true that it doesn't untap. We just gotta make sure you understand this because flying creatures also don't untap. All bugs have reason to fear me. Lurus of the Dream. So, uh, this card's actually awesome. Like, if you're a ground deck, you don't want to deal with flying. This is terrifying. Just being like, oh yeah. Yeah. Creatures with flying don't untap during their controller's untap step. That's a terrifying effect. What a great way of protecting your deck if you're, you know, not a flying deck, right? You don't have flyers, you're red. Except we've seen some pretty decent flyers in red so far, so I don't know. But that's, like... Ooh, that is, that's, if you can't deal with this and you're, like, a Flyers deck, everything you have is flying because it's, you know, generally an upside, that is, that is scary. I love it. I think that's great. Yadame Pack Leader. Cool. The whole Bugs thing, of course, is silly, but, like, it's not broken. Like, the card functions, so who cares? Um, speaking of being broken... Crond in uh, Crond slash U zero zero F six S sleep is a three mana red enchantment. You may tap this to destroy target artifact or enchantment. That is very strong. Repeatable artifact or enchantment removal. You can spend red and pay three life to add red. When Kron slash U00F6S sleep leaves the battlefield, sacrifice it. Would that work? Like, if, if I said return this to my hand, would you be able to sacrifice it? Or would it, like, be in your hand so you couldn't? Like, is there a window where it could get sacrificed? When it's like, well, you were going to bounce it to hand, but it gets sacrificed instead. Like, does that, does that happen? Hmm. I'm not sure. Let us share our sleep. Crucel, Death Knight. This card's very strong. It's also very weird. Maybe too strong. Maybe too weird. I think we're gonna re-roll this. It's just... It's unpronounceable. <laughs> I don't feel like... I, I'm not torn, right? It wasn't so interesting and so balanced that it felt like I needed to respect it. Ooh! Another black-red card. Famine is a three-mana red enchantment. It has the ability, generic and black, the next one damage that will be dealt to target creature this turn is dealt to any target player instead. Huh. That seems pretty expensive, but the fact that it doesn't just reduce the damage, it, like, redirects it, is potentially quite good. For three mana, that's probably too much, but, I mean... That's the thing about magic, right? Like, if, if you... If you've got a 4-4, four, four, your opponent has a 4-4, four, four, you're like, sweet, I can afford to attack. Because I got two open mana, if my opponent chooses to block, I say, cool, the next one point that would go to my 4-4 four, four from your 4-4 four, four is going to go to your face instead. My 4-4 four, four survives, your 4-4 four, four dies, because my 4-4 four, four only takes 3 damage instead of 4 damage. And then it recovers that life at the end step, because that's how magic works. Like... Yeah. Yeah, I think this, this card's solid, I think. There are always two sides to a famine. Those two sides are black and red. That's what, I've, it, that's what I'm learning. <laughs> Malakir Spawn is a two mana. Fantasy Fate Watcher Server. Huh. 
Interesting. Uh, Malakir Spawn is a two mana, one two vanilla spirit. It has flavor text, which we'll read, but we will be rerolling this. The first time you call on Malakir, he is equally intrigued by the vision as you are. The next time you do, you may spend that moment imagining a different scene entirely. Let's move on. Again, I do want to say, I'm not going to always roll vanilla creatures. I think there's a place for them, but they got to be playable, you know? Rhyme Field Slashers. That's a cool name for a card. It's a two mana, zero four elemental with defender. Ooh. Rhyme Field Slashers can block an additional creature each combat. Huh! I mean, the name doesn't make me think zero four defender that can block two creatures at once. But I actually love that design. Two Generally, I think the going rate is two mana for a zero four with a slight upside and defender. That That's like kind of normal. I wouldn't expect this to be a red card, but I'm into it, right? And the fact that you could like, I don't know, maybe buff this. Maybe you have some combat tricks and you're like, cool, I'm going to block your, you know, your two one ones. And then I buff this to get plus two attack and I kill both of them. Like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I like it. I think this, this design's really fun. Some elemental, huh? Ryan Field Slashers. They really feel like they should have some combat damage. Like, be able to actually, not, not necessarily attack, but have power, right? Being Slashers. We march upon Niv-Mizzet with arms wide open. Ryan Keeper Kabbalist. Cool. I like that. I'm not sure what the, like, flavor of red is yet so far, but I'm enjoying the cards I'm seeing, so... Dying Rites is a one mana red instant. Target creature gets plus one, plus O, oh, and gains indestructible until end of turn. Great. I don't know if that is weaker than similar effects or stronger than similar effects, but it has use case, right? Like that's the thing. Just because there's a card that exists that's stronger than a card does not mean that the card that, you know, the, the weaker one doesn't have a use case. Right? Sometimes you use the best you have because that's what's available in the set and the effect is still worth it. So, cool. This card looks great. In the shadows of the barrow, I live to slay another Elspeth. I mean, I don't know what Elspeth's doing, but that is an appropriate thing for that. I think the flavor checks out. Hunt for Aerith. Not spelt with a capital A for some reason, but okay, let's let's see where this goes. Hunt for Aerith is a three mana enchantment. Sorry, a four mana red enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life, where X is the number of snow permanents you control. Ooh! Wait a minute, what? So there haven't been many snow permanents in the set, but I don't think I've mentioned this in a video yet, but this JSON file that we're using, the one that I wrote for this, which takes Theros Beyond Death's mana costs and card types, has been set up where I modified it so that the land slots are snow lands. I haven't decided whether or not you can just put Snowlands in your deck, right? Like, if I if I understand the rules correctly, you may include Snowlands uh, in Limited, I should say. And in Constructed, you can do whatever you want. Um, or maybe you can't. I guess if you're in, like, Standard, there would have to be official Snowlands printed in that Standard. Is that true? I'm not 100% certain. But the point being is, I haven't decided if Snowlands are available or if only the special snowlands that I am the, the non-basic snowlands that I'm intending to print with this set um that's my plan so while obviously Theros Beyond Death does not have snowlands as one of its non-basics that is what I'm doing right I, I I have at the bottom of this file at the bottom of this page you know no mana cost snowlands that 
I'm going to just see what the AI comes up with. And hopefully that will be to do some interesting things. So I think this effect checks out. The problem is it's really scary, right? At bare minimum on turn four, which again, maybe for four mana, this is not, maybe it's a bit too slow, but you play this, you get four mana next turn, or four, sorry, <laughs> you get four life every turn. That is terrifying. That's, that's hard to beat. Then there's also that other card that cared about gaining eight life in a turn. <laughs> there's been a lot of life gain synergy in this set. So, like, this now has combo potential with every other color that's had life gain synergies. I think black has and white has. I think all of them have. Have we seen life gain payoff in every color so far? I think so. I could be wrong. There's only one road out of Arkan. We'd better follow it. Charge the four. Stalking Hunger is a 3-mana, three 3-2, three Vampire Berserker. Okay. So those vampires are established. I didn't re-roll that Phyrexian Vampire, right? I guess I might have. I don't think I did. But this one's not a Phyrexian. So there are some vampires, some are Phyrexian, some are not. Cool. It is a 3-mana, three 3-2 three with haste. And for generic and red, tap... Target vampire creature gains first strike until end of turn. Ooh, interesting. So, for three mana, it's a 3-2 with haste. Pretty okay. For five mana, you can give a vampire first strike, and then every turn from then on, you can spend two mana to give it first strike. And that could be very scary if there's a vampire payoffs in the set. I'm into it. I think it's cool. Again, this, there might be a cheaper way of getting this effect, but I like it. And it encourages you to do, like, tribal stuff, which I'm always into. Um, creature type matter stuff, I should say. I always want to avoid saying tribal. That feels, I don't know, disrespectful. He always looks at me like he wants to kill me. Uh, I should say what I mean by that is just, like, sort of... It feels reductive, I guess is what I'm saying, um, to actual, like, tribal communities. To use it just as, like, a throwaway term in a card game. Aladdin's Riddle. And it's not like an official term either. I guess like there's tribal cards in Lorwyn as a as a card type, but obviously we're not that's not what we're talking about when we say that in magic. Anyway, Aladdin's Riddle is a 5 mana 4/3 enchantment creature gorgon. We saw gorgons in black, I think. So that's interesting. Again, black red. Is there a black red combo? There might be. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 3-3 three, three red and green menace creature token with menace. <laughs> oh wait, it's a menace creature token with menace first strike trample and haste. Holy crap, that's terrifying. This card's good. It's called Aladdin's Riddle. That's cool. I don't know if it makes any, like, thematic sense, but it's cool. Yeah. Red-blue Spellslinger is going to be terrifying. So here's what... Okay, I want to talk about this for a second because I think it's interesting. I want to see... You know how, like, keyword counters exist where it's like, this is a menace counter. Anything with a menace counter has menace. I want to see, like keyword creature types so it's like oh i made a menace creature it's a creature with menace inherently it's just what it has always you can't take it away just it has it that would be so funny like you made a first strike creature token you made a trample creature you made a haste creature token except for in this case it is a menace creature token with menace first strike trample in hand so it's a little bit silly but i mean you know that guy is a menace it's an appropriate. It's a pro. It's an appropriate word for a creature type, even though there's no precedent. I I don't think if there's precedent, I want to hear about it. That's so funny. It seems like no matter what form the maze takes, it always leads to a trap. Uh, I don't think that it, this is probably too pushed, but I don't care. I think that's great. It's kind. It's, it's five mana. It comes down late. Like you can have some cool, scary pieces at that late in the in the game. I think. Cloak of Consumption is a two-mana enchantment aura. Enchant creature. 
As Cloak of Consumption enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. Okay. You may cast the chosen card without paying its mana cost. If you do, you lose the game. This does nothing in multiple ways. <laughs> so, like, yeah, ETB, choose, a, choose an opponent. That's totally reasonable. It doesn't change a creature, though. It doesn't have any benefit. Yeah, it doesn't have any benefit for enchanting a creature, or, or any effect for enchanting a creature. It just enchants a creature, which I will say, we've mentioned earlier how I think that's an interesting design. You could definitely have enchantments that the point of them is that they need a body. Like, you could make a whole, like, set theme around the idea of these are enchantments that are powerful and need to be carried by, like, shamans and stuff, right? They need to be on a creature. That'd be cool, actually, right? Like, if Enchanted Creature is a Shaman, do this. If Enchanted Creature is a Wizard, do this or something. And otherwise, it just does nothing. Ooh, that's a cool idea. Oh, I like that. That's fun. Wizards do that. That sounds cool. <laughs> the crowns are both of ash, and the shoulders are but wood. Yeah, I'm re-rolling this one. It doesn't, like... You may cast the chosen card. The chosen card is my opponent. <laughs> not a thing and then even if you do you just lose the game it's great Keldon war machine is a two mana red enchantment at the beginning of your end step if you control another red creature create a one one red construct artifact creature token cool everyone likes a token engine you have to have another creature for it to start but once it is started you know it doesn't have to be a non-token creature or anything so that even if you lose that initial creature, this will just continue to go. As long as you don't lose all your creatures. I'm into it. It's got counterplay, conceptually. I mean, it might be hard to pull off, but it, it has a counterplay. Um, doesn't take too long to get online. Yeah, I'm into it. There is no distinction between heat and cold. Keldon Ritualist. It's also end step, I just noticed. So yeah, if you're playing like a fast, like aggro red deck card this card's great because turn one you play like you know your one mana one one haste or whatever and then on turn two you play Keldon war machine and it just start, starts pushing out one one constructs they're artifact creatures if that's relevant it's cool yeah it's really cool Wojek, Master Blaster. Hello, Wojek. Welcome back. Um, interestingly, again, this is not a legendary card. So, talk amongst yourselves about what that means. What it is, you know, this is the Master Blaster, you know, uh, uh, faction within, like, sub-faction within the Wojek faction. I don't know. Two mana, giant warrior enchantment creature. Okay. It's a 1-1 one, one with haste. Hmm. Funny, we were just talking about 1-1s one, with haste. Wojek Master Blaster enters the battlefield with three 1-1 one, one counters on it. Never mind! This is a three mana 4-4 four, four with haste. Oh no. Did I say three mana? Two mana. Two mana 4-4. Four, four. For red and sacrificing Wojek, create a 1-1 one, one red and white elf creature token um elf warrior if that matters so you're just never going to use that effect but uh this is a two mana hasty four four i is this where i draw the line is this where i draw the line i'm not saying that this is drawing the line as a like too powerful compared to other things we have probably already seen more powerful things than this but i think we can do better so I don't mind re-rolling this one. Um, it's cool, though. It's cool. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not cool. I say it's cool. It's not. This is just a two-mana 4-4 four, four with haste. That's all it is. There's nothing actually, like, compelling about this design. Except for the fact that they're counters. So you could maybe do shenanigans with that. But, like, that, whatever. That's so minor. When you get your butcher's block down to a clean slate, lay a flask of single malt and make sure it's triple distilled. Let's go. We can do better. We can do better than that. Moonlit Butcher. Wow, it's like it saw the last card. Moonlit Butcher is a two mana 
2-1 Enchantment Creature Elemental. That seems appropriate. Sacrifice a creature as an activated ability, or as the cost for an activated ability. Put a woman counter on Moonlit Butcher. That is so good. Oh, that's so cool. And then three mana to regenerate Moonlit Butcher, which like, Butcher, Butcher. Oh, wow, my mouth. Um, yeah, right. If basically, you know, you throw it down for two, it's a two one. You're you're gonna hope to be able to get some counters on it. You know, killing those artifact construct tokens that we saw earlier uh to make this thing bigger but it's not gonna just crumble and die because it can regenerate itself maybe it's a little expensive to regenerate itself but that's okay because it's like a very valuable target you're consolidating power but you're protecting that power this card's rad this card's cool moonlit butcher enchantment creature elemental this is cool i like this card when in the field, no other mage can look at the stars. What? Can look to the stars? I don't I don't understand that. Hulking Berserker is a five mana, three three human berserker. Better have a good ability. Whenever Hulking Berserker deals combat damage to a player, you may exile target artifact pre car artifact card from your graveyard. What a weak upside. <laughs> <laughs> have we seen any humans in red yet? I don't think we have. No humans in red. We don't need them. I must claim this body to bury it under its bones. Okay. Good luck with that. Yogmoth's Imp. What? <laughs> Yogmoth's Imp is a 5 mana, 5-5 five, five red devil. It has flying, and it says, when Yogmoth's Imp enters the battlefield, sacrifice, wait, what? Sacrifice it, unless white, blue, black, red, and green was spent to cast it. But it cost, if, if this didn't cost red, red, <laughs> that would be, basically what this is saying is, this should be, like, you need to tax yourself. You need to tax yourself one so it costs more, and then you can, and then it costs Wooberg plus an extra red, and all you get is a 5-5 five, five with a flying. I mean, 5-5 five, five with flying is good, don't get me wrong, but like... I mean, it's cut off anyway, who cares? Whenever I see that, I'm like, ooh... It's printed all the colors. It, what's it gonna do? It's like ah, it just it just it just sacrifices itself if you don't do this. So nothing interesting. He looked for places where devils would be unlikely to go. A hospital, for example, would require far too many restraints. A zoo. He needn't. He didn't need the excitement of animals. A ballroom. Too many, as tempting as it was. He was, he would search only in the places he could control. I don't know what the heck. This doesn't matter. This isn't in the set. What am I, why am I wasting time on this? <laughs> Grave Harvester is a five mana, four, four Phyrexian zombie. Ooh, okay. What are the Phyrexians doing here? There's been a bunch of them. Other zombies you control get plus one, plus one, and have haste. Ooh, that's cool. Whenever Grave Harvester attacks, you may exile a card from your graveyard. If you do, Grave Harvester deals damage equal to the exile card's mana value to any target. This card is rad! Holy crap, this card's cool! Five mana four four that buffs other zombies and give them haste, which is already awesome. And then when it when it, when it attacks, it's a grave harvester. It, it it exiles cards from your graveyard to burn your opponent. Oh, that's cool. That's so cool. I love that. That's awesome.
Did I finish reading that? There's always one among them that feels strangely alive. That was that 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 card's awesome. That card's so cool. Hellion Sky Raider is a three mana two two Minotaur. Well, let's see all the Minotaurs in red. This is great. It has flying and haste. Yeah, it's a flying Minotaur. This is awesome. When Hellion Sky Raider deals combat damage to a player, put a woman counter on it. Ah, oh, oh, be still my heart. This card's awesome. The life of the Kraken feeds the entire Kraken colony. I think red might be my favorite so far. This, this, this sense... This, the red cards are really cool. They're interesting, they're fun, they're strong, but they're not, like, so strong that I'm like, oh, I can't even justify this. Like, ah. Uh, Overkill is a four-mana red sorcery. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, you gain four life. Okay, I want to talk about this card for a bit. There's like, what, like a, what was it? Like a three mana instant speed destroy target artifact or enchantment? And this is four mana, but you get four life. It's overkill. Yeah. <laughs> nice. No, I love it. That's great. Dust it and light it because I found my newest steed. Chasmal Necromancer. It's kind of a shame that this can't hit creatures, because you'd think it would. Overkill just sounds like a card that could hit creatures, but yeah, that's fine. We got enchantment creatures. I like the idea of enchantment creature being kind of like a drawback mostly in this set. I think that's a really interesting balancing factor. Which is why they tend to be like really strong, but there's more enchantment removal than like I don't know. That's probably not true. Ibra Lanawar Empath. Oh, hello, what? Wait a minute. Five mana, four, three, legendary enchantment creature, orc, shaman? Oh, I didn't get there fast enough. I didn't get to select it. Uh, if I selected, I probably could have actually found what the, uh, the typing was there. That feels bad. Like, there is a... We've seen Orc Shamans already in this set. It stands to reason that this is an Orc Shaman. The the AI decided to draw her that way. Not that she looks like an Orc, to be honest, but whatever. Let's ignore that fact. But all we see is an S, right? If you brought this to a table and you were trying to convince everyone it said Orc Shaman, they would be very much in their mind. Like, they'd be in their right to go, what well, could be a soldier. We don't know that that's a Shaman, you know? Five mana, four, three with first strike. You can also spend generic, red, and tap to draw a card, then discard a card. Sometimes you must hold the land to let your mind travel. Well, I'm sorry, Ibra. We'll move on to someone else. I hope they're as cool as you. Although you could be cooler to be H. <laughs> Insolent neonate? What? <laughs> and that's probably a Phyrexian something, right? To be clear, right? Earlier when we saw that Minotaur that was like a legendary enchantment creature, it was a Minotaur, right? It could have been a Minotaur Shaman. We don't know. Like, that, it was cut off. We don't know. Again, I mentioned this in the previous videos. I don't like cut off car cards. I don't like text that's cut off. But I'm making an exception for the enchantment creatures because they're just, there's just not enough space. Um... It has been mentioned in comments that I could change the the text sizing. I think it is possible because the way that Urza's AI works is it renders on the client side. So you can get, like, you can mess with those values if you want to go into it, but but I don't want to. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing that. The cards look good. I'm not messing with it. Insolent Neonate, doesn't sound like a legendary creature to me, is a 5 mana 3-3. Three, three. Phyrexian something, probably. Insolent Neonate enters the battlefield with four X charge counters on it. Okay, I'm rerolling this. Who cares? As long as Insolent Neonate has X charge counters on it, it has haste. Enchanted creature, it's not that kind of enchantment, gets plus one, plus one for each charge counter on Insolent Neonate. 
They're not charge counters. They're X charge counters. It's Glee is irresistible. Vibro Blade Shredder. Again, not legendary. I want a legendary name. Maybe I ask too much, but uh, I do. Five mana, three, four, legendary enchantment creature goblin. As an activated ability, sacrifice another creature. Vibro Blade Shredder gets plus three, plus O oh until end of turn. Woo! Oh, that is scary. Holy crap. That's a cool card. Oh, do I allow this? It's such not a legendary, but it's so cool. I don't think I allow this. It's not even, this doesn't even feel like an enchantment. That's an odd little form, and I don't think it likes its skin. Ash, Goblin Warrior. Why can't this be Ash, Vibroblade Shredder? Like, that's all you needed to do. It's all you needed to do. Oh, wow. Sacrifice a creature for plus three plus O. Oh. You could do this as many times as you want in a turn. Like that is that is terrifying. That's so scary. I really like this card. Oh well. We can do better. It's okay. Father of Mountains. Okay, so not the like traditional structure, but I think it fits as a legendary name. It's 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 fine. Is a five mana three Three Nephilim? Legendary enchantment creature. Huh. As long as you control a red or green permanent, creatures you control get plus two, plus two. So this is a five mana th three three. Except for it doesn't say other, so this is a five mana five five that that just indiscriminately gives your creatures plus two plus two. Ah, uh, it's pretty good, pretty good right there, pretty good. The god sought a home for his people and chose an area surrounded by living rock. Honestly, yeah, if this was just a god, if this was just a god, this card would be so good. Do I, do I keep this? It's so close. It's so close. I mean, it's definitely a Nephilim, right? Like, that's what it's going for, is a Nephilim. Father of Mountains, the legendary enchantment creature Nephilim. I don't know what a Nephilim is. Do they make sense in this setting? Nothing makes sense in this setting. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you're probably right. I guess that's not a big deal. I think we allow it. I know it's got a little bit of a stupid wording. Like, as long as you control a red or green permanent, and this is a red permanent, it's not like... It's not forcing you to have another red or green permanent. In which case, this card would be probably pretty cool. But I don't think it's... Uh, like, needs to be. I think it's fine that this is a 5 mana 5-5 five five that gives everything plus 2 plus 2. Like, I think that's fine. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it needs to be restricted. It's just the wording's weird. It's not like... It's not breaking, though. Whew! Let's keep going. Ooh. Ooh, an X card. What do you have for me today, Urza's AI? Sarah Avenger. X and red for a sorcery. Choose X target creatures. They each gain indestructible until end of turn. I kind of love this. Huh. I kind of love this. Two mana give something indestructible. Three mana give two things indestructible. Four mana give three things indestructible. Yeah. I mean, it's not so good at sorcery speed. But like, cool. It's a very cleanly designed X card. And like... That's all you could ask for. Like, yeah, it's bad at X cards. <laughs> My heart and armor, I'll use both to punish the one who harmed the light. Sarah Avenger. Yeah, wait, Sarah Avenger? Is that a real name for a card? This doesn't feel like the name of a sorcery, but I'll allow it. I'm not as 
picky as I am with my legendaries. Overmaster's Call is a one mana red sorcery. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card. Put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Huh! One mana draw a non-land. It's a shame it's a sorcery. Like, it'd be better if it was instant, but like, yeah. I mean... Would you run this? I guess there's no reason to run this, is there? If this... Like... This would be cool if it was a dual-faced card, like, like a dual-modal land, right? If this was a dual-modal land, that would be really cool. But as it stands, it's like, what's the point, I guess? Because if this just was a different card, it's the card it's finding, right? Like, oh, wow, it skips over lands. Like, sure, but you've already drawn this card. If this card was a different card, then you'd just be drawing that card instead of the land anyway. Like, I don't know if there's a point to this. But, you know, if you care about casting spells, just like as cantrips, I mean, cantrips are good. Cantrips are useful. They have use case. We've already seen a card that cared about you casting sorceries, right? Like, I think it goes in the set, but it's a it, it needs a specific deck, and that's okay. In the teeth of every storm, she whispers, there is... A lull. Huh. Alright. High Seas Skulker is a 4 mana 3 2 orc pirate. I gotta be honest, yeah, it loves orc pirates. The AI has given me so many orc pirates so far. This pirate, however, has the keyword swashbuckler. Swashbuckler, two generic, one blue. Okay, we're seeing red, blue, interesting. It has the reminder text for two generic and one blue, return an unblocked attacker you control to your hand to draw a card. I kind of love it. It's a spin on ninjutsu, right? So instead of substituting an unblocked attacker with with a card in your hand and swapping them and having it then attack unblocked, it just leaves combat and goes to your hand. So if you care about like ETBs, right, you could have it enter again. And you get to draw. This is cool. This this is actually really cool. I don't know if it's good, but it's very cool. For three mana, it's probably too expensive. Ah, oh, if, if only the, like, AI could look at its own designs and go, like, if I could say, this card is cool, do more cards like this. Like, I want to see more cards with the swashbuckler keyword. Like, that, that's cool. And, like, red-blue for swashbuckling orc part. Like, I'm into it. I'm, I'm so... I'm so on board. Let me introduce myself. I am the spirit of adventure, and I am delighted to see you in the here and now. You must forgive me for disturbing you, so I would rather be among the undead, for they are the ep epitome of foolishness. And yet, I will answer their foolishness gladly, for they do not know how precious life can be. I need to find the, like, like, this is begging for a legendary card. It's like a legendary orc pirate that has, like, you know, swashbuckler. What's weird about swashbuckler here is that it's, like, it's just an activated ability of this card. It's not like ninjutsu where it like it's not swapping itself. It's it like right? It doesn't jump itself out. Or I guess ninjutsu is 
you activate it from your hand and it swaps out with something on the field, but whatever. The point is, like, the card that has Swash Buckler is kind of irrelevant. They don't have to be attacking. They don't have to be, you know, benef interacting at all, but... Yeah, ooh. Ah, oh, I'm into it. I think it's... Ah, this card's cool. This card's great. I love this. Let's go. Regenerating Winter Tyrant is a 5-mana 6-5 Dinosaur. Yes! Let's go! When Regenerating Winter Tyrant dies, return it to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. <laughs> this card's awesome! If only... Okay, so if this card didn't say died, it said left the battlefield, this card would be so funny because you could use it with that, that card that cares about, like... The thing is, yeah, that, that card we've seen, unfortunately... Okay, I should actually specify what I'm saying. I don't remember the name of it. Whenever a source you control deals damage to a player, exile that card, like, and then make a 1-1. One -one. That card was interesting and honestly has no combo potential so far, right? We don't have a bunch of burn instants or anything. Like, it's not really a very strong card with what we've seen. But if this said, like, leaves the battlefield... It would go into exile, and then it would come back in the next end step, and, it would, and you'd get your 1-1, one, one, and that would be so cool, but it, it, it's, it just dies. But that's okay! It's still card- this card still- this card doesn't need to be stronger. It's a 5 mana 6-5 that can't die. It's awesome. I love it. 8 hour farms and 8 hour families. Now the slithering slayer waits in our mountains for another tasty meal. This section, the red section of the set, is just so- like, flavorful. Mm. Oh, there's, like, monsters in the mountains and stuff. Ah, oh, it's cool. Yorian, Talus Scout. I don't know Yorian very well. I recognize the name, though. Oh, that's awesome. Quag Slinger is a 3-mana, three 3-2 three, Dwarf Warrior. Oh, we haven't seen many dwarves. I think we've seen one other dwarf. I think. I think we've seen one other dwarf. As Quag Slinger enters the battlefield, you may reveal an equipment card you own from outside the game and put it into your hand. If you do, discard Quag Slinger. So we don't think about discarding cards from play. We, we like, sacrifice them or whatever. But, like, I don't know if that's inherently wrong, you know? It's a 3-2-3. Three, three. It's either a 3-mana three 3-2, three, or it immediately gets discarded, meaning going to your graveyard. Like, it's not what we're used to seeing, but I don't know if it's inherently wrong. Um, and instead, you may use it as a 3-mana, put an equipment card from it to your game as you can. Like, I think the design of this card is actually pretty solid. It's just the wording is bad. It should sacrifice itself. The wild dwarves love throwing metal. The more things go boom, the more they enjoy it. You know? Hmm. Let me know in your in the comments if you think I should allow this from the perspective of, like, do the rules function, right? Like, and I, I want to be clear. I don't mean if you took this to a table and you said, hey, this is how I'm interpreting this. Is everyone okay with that? I think people would be fine with it. But... Do the rules actually function? Like, is this okay? Or is there a rules precedent that says you can't discard a permanent that's on the battlefield? That's just, it would fail, right? And maybe there's rules that say that because, like, there are discard effects that discard a card from your hand. It's like, well, if the card is in the battlefield, then you can't discard it. And, like, there's no effect that wants you to do that. So there's, there's intentional rules clarification that stops that corner case from happening. But... I'm going to allow it, but I really want to know if people have opinions on this. <laughs> like, I'm legitimately curious. It's cool. It feels just very dwarf. I I love it. I think it's a really solid design. Also, now we know about wild dwarves in the mountains. Ugh. I do love how, like, the red faction is very clearly, like, the mountain folk, which is appropriate, because... 
mountains are what makes red mana. Like, it's really, really solid. It's so good. Fellhide Shaman is a 3-mana, three 3-2 three, elemental shaman. Ooh. Tap to prevent the next one damage that will be dealt to target creature this turn. Again, I think that effect's kind of boring, but honestly, it's a 3-mana, three 3-2. Three, it's not terrible vanilla. I don't think it needs that strong of an upside to be playable. I think this is a fine common. When I was lost, it showed me the way. Fellhide Leashfolk saying. Leashfolk. Leashfolk. Leash folk. Leash folk. Fist of Raza. Ooh, is Raza some. Raza's definitely a legendary in this set. Can you believe? Wow, okay. Fist of Raza is a four mana red sorcery. This spell costs one generic less to cast for each card in your hand. That could go as a, as low as uh, Red Red, because it's too generic in Red Red. So, unless you're Hellbent, like, this is a two mana. This is a Red Red for a sorcery. Create two, two, two Red Dragon creature tokens with haste. They don't have flying. Interesting. So, what's, yeah, what's, what's weird about this is that we previously saw that stupid card that, like, made two two twos with flying, and I'm like, this is dumb. This card's too good. Um, this card, I think, is, I don't know, it's hard to compare, right? Because the fact that they have haste is a big deal, right? Like, at bare minimum, not bare minimum, depending on blockers, like, if there's no, if there's no favorable attacks, then who's to say? But largely, this is going to be two mana, do four damage to face, and then you still have two twos twos at the end, right? That's often what's going to happen. That seems pretty good to me, but I don't know if it seems broken. I, th I think I like this card better than I like that other one that we let through already. Raza wants what's her. Pfft, sorry, what's hers. And I want to say, I'm not just saying that because I think Raza sounds cool and I want to see more Raza cards. Oh, yeah, Raza's definitely a legendary in this set. Oh, that's so rad. I should say, like, like to clarify, I obviously don't think Raza's going to show up. It would be amazing if a Raza card showed up, but it would be, like, the most surprising thing. Uh, I just mean, like, if we imagine this set, like, Raza would be a, would be a character, right? Jeldoran Nightbane is a 4-mana, 3-2 vampire with Bloodthirst 1. It has reminder text, if an opponent was dealt damage this turn, this creature enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, I, I don't know if that's a real key. That might be a real keyword. It sounds real. It sounds like a real... I, 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 I legit have no idea. Anyway, it's a four mana, four, three sometimes, and a three, two sometimes. When Jildoran Nightbane enters the battlefield, it deals one damage for each creature... Oh, to each creature without flying. Huh. So that would include itself, but, you know, it, it should survive. That's not a big deal. Huh. Red is a bit confused about whether it wants to hate flyers or hate non-flyers. I guess, I guess you can deal with either is maybe a useful thing. Uh, is this card good enough? For four mana... Pings the board for one. Often that's useful. Is a 3-2, which is below, not, not, not really good enough for four, but the ping effect makes it probably good. And then if you have Bloodthirst, it's a 4-3 instead. I think it's a little bit worse than it needs to be, but that's okay. I think it's in a good space. Yeah. It's interesting. It's flavorful. It has a use case where you're going to, like, get more value with it than just playing it normally. Um, yeah, I like it. It's my skin that feeds me, and I am the predator that I am. Himrod, Aura Sky Mage. All right. Flames of the Inferno is a two-mana red instant. Flames of the Inferno deals four damage to target creature. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. I mean, we've seen, like, str like 
probably stronger cards than this already, but like, that's pretty red. That's a pretty red effect, if you ask me. For generations, those who entered the swamps below Daruvar fell to their own devices, drawn to the flame. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Dawn Raid is a three mana red enchantment aura. Ooh, interesting. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus two, has haste. I certainly don't think this is unplayable or unprintable. I guess I just kind of want something different. Like, I feel like we've seen en enough of these, like, enchant creature gets bonus stats and a keyword. Like, I don't know. Like, we saw we had, a, we had a first strike one. We had a flying one. This is cool. Like, giving things haste is cool, but for three extra mana, like, often... You don't have the three extra mana on the turn it came into the battlefield. You're going to be playing it a different turn, so, like, maybe you don't care. I think this card is perfectly reasonable, and I'm going to reroll it anyway. That's what I'm saying here. In this harsh world, an honorable life is not easy. Rivenar, outcast captain. Rhyme of the Frostman. Have we ever had a card with this name? There was a card that had Rhyme of the Frostman in the flavor text. I wonder if we kept that card or not. It's also just weird because, like, I'm sure it's not the originator of the phrase or anything, but there's a D&D &D module called Rhyme of the Frostman, which feels so weird <laughs> to see it as, like, just a phrase that the AI picked. Rhyme of the Frostman is a three-mana red enchantment. It doesn't look very red, but oh well. At the beginning of your end step... If you gained four or more life this turn, sacrifice. The pallid skin of her gowns turned brittle. Wait, the skin of her gowns? That doesn't sound right. Brittle with ice, leaving only the sharp-tipped branches of her fingernails. Okay. It sacrifices itself. It has no effect. Okay, moving on. Binding Grasp is a three mana aura. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus O. Oh. Activated ability. For three mana, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus O oh, until end of turn. It's probably a, like a better rate, like a more printable rate, but it's not exciting. Some make their living seeking ice. Others prey upon it. Wait, what? <laughs> what does that mean? Spell Rack Reassembly is a three mana red enchantment. It has the activate ability Red and Sacrifice Spell Rack Assembly, Reassembly Counter Target Sorcery. Ew. I mean, you're red, you don't have a lot of counter spells, I guess, but like, four mana? Where you have to spend three of it ahead of time because you can't counter things that it's like it's a, it's an enchantment. You can't you know while something on the stack spend four to 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 counter something. So it's three mana up front, and then you have an on board one mana counter spell that can only hit sort. I mean, it's one mana counter spell that can only hit sorceries. The fact that it's one mana can only hit sorceries is like fine. Except it's not one mana. It's four mana because you have to pay the upfront cost but it's not even just as bad as a four mana one it's a four mana one that you have to like it is nice that you can pay it in installments right like that is useful i don't want to leave up four mana being able to spend three and then only have to leave up one red mana is a big deal don't get me wrong but it becomes an onboard trick which means it's even worse like this is so narrow what the heck is that you want to eat it the trick is to blow it up. Do you want to try that? Axel, Whisperer Leader. Now we're trying again. We can do better. We can do better. Battleground Siege is a three mana red enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one plus one. Okay. As an activated ability, tap to attach Battleground Siege to target creature you control. Reminder text, this effect lasts indefinitely. 
Um, huh. So it's not an aura, right? Like, it isn't an aura. I don't know if it's allowed to be... I'm not, I don't know if it's allowed to enchant a creature. Just by the rules of the game, I have no idea. Let's assume it is. So you can attach it to a creature. It's an enchantment attached to a creature, therefore it's enchanting that creature. Cool. It has no benefit for doing this, right? Like, this is a three-mana give everything plus one plus one, which I think is fine. I think that is totally legit. It's not super interesting, but it's totally legit. It has an activated ability that you will just never use. It has no upside. Maybe it's not legal. I'm not sure. Eh, whatever. Quirks of the AI. I'm fine with it. It makes it a little bit more interesting, even though it's not actually any different. <laughs> Snow was the winter of the four clans. It could no longer be called winter without a single living voice to acknowledge its passing. Huh. Interesting. Frost Storm is a two mana red aura. Enchant creature. When Frost Storm enters the battlefield, exile up to one other target creature. Ooh. Ooh, that's gross. I mean, it's just a two mana sorcery speed exile a creature. It's not the worst, but being on enchantment, I. Oh, well, actually. Once again, we're seeing this thing where it's an it's enchant creature, right? So, well, actually, no, that's not relevant. No, it's not relevant at all because you could just enchant the creature that you want to exile, and of course, you don't really care if it if it's frost storm leaves the battlefield because because of the creature it was attached to dying. That's not relevant to you because well, it already did its thing. Uh, unless you were planning on flickering it. If you're planning on flickering it, this is pretty cool. You could like. I like the idea of this as a permanent that you could flicker, which makes it more powerful in theory. The drawback being that it needs a host. Now, if you don't care about flickering it, the host can be its target. This card's cool, actually. This card's really cool. Hail to the greatest hunter of them all. You'll need every ounce of luck and skill to survive. Nathara. No, it's actually a really interesting design. Like, it's, it's more complex than it seems at first. I don't know if it's actually, like, more interesting, right? Like, I don't know if there's a benefit of it being that more complex, but it, it is. It is. Tendrils of Corruption. That, that art is wild. That is cool. Oh. Uh, honestly, like, say what you will about AI art, but it makes me want to draw. Like, it makes me go, like, ooh, that's interesting. I want to I wanna riff off of this. Which is how I also feel about, you know, the designs, the, like, you know, custom card work that the AI comes up with. It makes me want to riff off of it. Ah, it's great. Tendrils of Corruption is a two-mana red sorcery. Tendrils of Corruption deals two damage to any target. May you perish in the flames of rebirth. Ora er Oracle Unlock. You know, so this is one of those cards that I, I normally look at this and I go, that sucks. And I'm, I'm mostly right. Like, this could be an instant, you know... This is worse than, like, this is, like, the worst version of Lightning Bolt ever, right? Lightning Bolt keeps getting made worse and worse and worse because Lightning Bolt's too strong. Two mana, two damage, sorcery speed. It's pretty bad. But we don't have a lot of things in this set that I feel really comfortable comboing with that weird card, and I want to see more things that combo with that weird card because it's interesting. Could you make a full burn deck? I don't think you could. Not not in like if you were only playing this set, right? If you were, if you were mixing sets, I think you could you could you could you could make a pretty cool burn deck using that one aura or enchantment. But otherwise, not really. But you know what? Would you run this in limited? Maybe. I don't know. I don't get. I don't. I don't. I don't need to decide that for you. You might, even if I might not. I'm gonna allow it. Acidic slime is a two mana zero two elemental. Interesting. For generic and red, acidic slime gets plus one plus zero oh until end of turn. Huh. 
that's like a cool design, but the 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 mana costs are all off. Like I think that this is way too. The 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 buff cost is way too expensive. And. Yeah, the the baseline is way too small. Yeah, no, and I like the idea of like a zero something that can get like pretty big and strong, but whatever. A skirmish to warm up the subject, but the larger confrontation would require cold. Also, that 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 art is so not very red. Underworld Pit Raider is a two mana two one devil. Ooh, Underworld Pit Raider. Gets plus one, plus one, as long as you control another red creature. I like that design. I think it's a fun... De like, is a two-mana three-two, like, vanilla good enough? Probably not. It's probably not, honestly. But, like, I don't know. I, I like the sort of just, like, this thing is stronger when it's got friends. Like, that's just, that's just cute. I like it. The tortoise still bears the scorch mark from when the Sahagin held it at bay. What? Tortoise? Sahagin? <laughs> Unmake the Circle is a four mana red sorcery. Exile target non land permanent. Okay. Pretty cool. Four mana to exile any non-land permanent. Pretty good so far. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, now it's bad again. That's a shame. Like, don't get me wrong, Flicker's relevant. Although, I don't think we've seen many really powerful ETBs uh, on creatures and stuff. But, like... This just feels like overpriced removal with a downside, right? Like, nah. Nah, we're not, we're not keeping this. This plan would have succeeded. Instead, it simply began. Iko, Drow Scholar. That's kind of a cool, like... I actually kind of love that phrase. The idea of, like, oh, the plan was going to succeed, but instead, it just began. It didn't fail. It's just not... Compl it hasn't succeeded yet, right? We thought it was going to succeed now, but it just hasn't succeeded yet. It didn't fail. It just hasn't succeeded yet. Intense Cold is a 4-mana red sorcery. Destroy target creature. Its controller loses 2 life, and you gain 2 life. Interesting. See, if this card said, Intense Cold deals 2 damage to its controller, and you gain 2 life, it would be better! Because then we could combo it with that other card! I'm sorry I'm ragging on that card so much, but it's such an interesting design with no payoffs. I like this card. It's a little bit expensive, but like, eh, it's got some nice upside. It's reasonable. With little choice in the matter, Urza offered the Rish one of the deadliest snow serpents. I don't think this is about this card. His embrace. Wait, what? One of the deadliest snow serpents, his embrace? What? Oh! Urza offered the Rish, one of his deadliest snow serpents, his embrace. The ancient Rish has lived on the cold wastes of the land of death ever since. Urza hugged a snow serpent, and now that snow serpent lives in the cold waters, or the wastes, the cold wastes of the land of death. Is that where this takes place? Is this winter gods of the land of death? I think we'd get some very different designs if that was the case. Huh. Interesting. I feel, I feel like we haven't seen a lot of the god theme in this set. Oh! We made it to green, and that means we're at the end of today's... Session. Whatever you want to call it. Ooh! My goal was to get through all of red today. We did that. I will see you next time. But I will leave you with this. Galena, the Wakening Storm. A four mana, green, six, six, legendary enchantment creature elemental at the beginning of your end step. If you control three or more creatures with different powers, so 
Conclave? What's that one called? You know the one. Coven. Each of them gains flying until end of turn. So I don't know how the wording on this is correct. The idea of, like, if you control three or more creatures with different powers, each of them? I guess it's, yeah. Like, does that mean you have to choose three or more creatures that have different powers? Because if you had, like, five creatures, and two of them had the same power, you could choose, there was, there's, there's, you could choose either of those ones with the same power, right? But you only choose one of them, I think. I like this effect. It's a four mana six six vanilla already. But hey, it's an legendary enchantment creature named Galena the Awakening Storm. I think it's a great place to stop. Get ready for the last color of Gods of Winter. Where we're going to be doing green in the next video uh which will be coming out on friday so please look forward to that <sighs> after green we of course still have our multicolor and our colorless so hope everyone's excited to see the first set of our winter block coming together as we move into december Woo! i'm excited have a good everyone i've been darcy bits i will see you next time